salt. It's in our kitchens, on our restaurant tables, and in almost every packaged food we buy. Some call it the white poison. Others insist it's the most important mineral for human survival. So, which is it? Is salt silently harming millions? Or have we been unfairly demonizing an essential nutrient? Today, we're cutting through the myths, marketing, and misunderstandings to uncover the truth about salt, including how much is too much, how much you really need, and how to find that just right balance for your health. If you've ever wondered whether you should cut back, switch to pink Himalayan salt, or maybe even add more to your diet, you're in the right place. Let's dive in. Chapter one, why salt is more than just flavor. Before we jump into the dangers, let's remember something important. Salt is not a modern invention. It's a biological necessity. Chemically, salt is sodium chloride. 40% sodium, 60% chloride. Both are electrolytes, which means they carry an electric charge and are crucial for nerve signaling, muscle contractions, and fluid balance. Without enough sodium, your body can't. Keep the right amount of water in and around your cells. Send nerve impulses efficiently. Support proper muscle function, including the most important muscle of all, your heart. Salt has shaped history in ways we rarely think about. Ancient civilizations fought wars over it. Trade routes were built around it. The word salary comes from salarium, the payment Roman soldiers received to buy salt. Our ancestors didn't have a luxury problem of too much salt. They often struggled to get enough. But in today's food environment, it's the opposite story. Chapter two, the delicate balance, sodium needs versus risks. Most health organizations, including the World Health Organization and the American Heart Association, recommend keeping sodium between 1,500 and 2,300 milligrams per day. That's roughly three quarters of a teaspoon of table salt. Sounds simple enough. But here's the reality. The average person consumes around 3,400 milligrams daily. And many people don't even realize it. Why does this matter? Because excessive sodium intake can increase blood pressure, put strain on the heart and blood vessels, raise the risk of heart attack and stroke, burden the kidneys over time. The mechanism is straightforward. When sodium levels in the blood rise, your body retains water to dilute it. That extra fluid increases blood volume, which pushes harder against artery walls, like turning up the water pressure in a hose. Over years, this constant pressure wears down blood vessels, leading to long-term damage. Chapter three, the salt blood pressure connection. The link between salt and blood pressure is one of the most studied in nutrition science. The famous DASH sodium trial showed that reducing sodium intake while eating plenty of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains lowered blood pressure in just weeks. But here's where it gets interesting. Not everyone reacts the same way to sodium. Some people, especially older adults, people with high blood pressure and certain ethnic groups are salt sensitive. Even small increases in sodium can make their blood pressure rise significantly. Others are more salt resistant, meaning their blood pressure doesn't change much even with higher sodium intake. The tricky part? You usually can't tell which group you're in without testing, and most of us fall somewhere in the middle. Chapter four, the benefits of sodium. Why too little can be dangerous. While we hear a lot about the dangers of too much sodium, too little can be just as risky, especially for certain people. Low sodium intake below about 1,200 milligrams per day can lead to muscle cramps, fatigue and weakness, low blood pressure and dizziness, hyponatremia, dangerously low sodium in the blood, which can cause confusion, seizures, or even death in extreme cases. This is more common in endurance athletes, people who sweat heavily in hot climates, or those on medications like diuretics. Sodium also plays a role in nutrient absorption in the gut. 
maintaining proper pH balance in the blood, supporting adrenal gland function. The bottom line, the danger isn't salt itself, it's imbalance. Chapter five, the real source of excess sodium. Here's the surprising truth. Over 70% of the sodium we eat doesn't come from the salt shaker. It comes from processed and restaurant foods. Top contributors include bread and baked goods. Yes, bread, not just chips. Deli meats and bacon, canned soups and vegetables, cheese and snack foods, sauces like soy sauce, ketchup, barbecue sauce. This is why simply adding less salt at home barely makes a dent in your daily intake. The real strategy is to reduce hidden sodium in packaged foods. Chapter six, does the type of salt matter? Sea salt, kosher salt, Himalayan pink salt, they're marketed as healthier, more natural choices. But here's the truth. From a sodium standpoint, they're basically the same. Sea salt and pink salt do contain trace minerals like magnesium and potassium, but the amounts are so small, they don't meaningfully change your nutrition. The main differences are texture, which can affect how much you sprinkle, flavor, some are milder, others sharper, marketing appeal, if you prefer the taste or texture, go for it. But switching from table salt to pink salt won't fix a high sodium diet. Chapter seven, how to reduce sodium without sacrificing flavor. Season with herbs and spices, garlic, onion powder, smoked paprika, rosemary, cumin, and fresh herbs add depth without sodium. Use citrus and vinegar, lemon, lime, and apple cider vinegar, brighten flavors without salt. Rinse canned goods. This can cut sodium by up to 40%. Check nutrition labels. Aim for low sodium, 140 milligrams or less per serving. Cook more meals at home. Restaurants often load dishes with salt for flavor and preservation. This way, you can eat flavorful meals without unknowingly going over your daily sodium limit. Chapter eight, salt sensitivity and individual needs. How much sodium you need depends on age. Older adults tend to be more salt sensitive. Genetics, certain ethnic backgrounds have higher sensitivity. Health conditions, kidney disease, heart failure, or high blood pressure require stricter limits. Activity level, athletes and those in hot climates may need more. This is why two people can eat the same meal and have very different health effects. Chapter nine, what the latest research says. Recent studies suggest sodium's relationship with health isn't a straight line, it's a J-shaped curve. Very high sodium increases cardiovascular risk. Extremely low sodium may also raise the risk of certain health issues, like insulin resistance or high cholesterol. For most healthy adults, the sweet spot seems to be around 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams per day, but individual factors matter. Chapter 10, your five-step plan to sodium balance. One track for awareness. Use an app or food diary for three days to see where your sodium comes from. Two, cut the biggest offenders first. Replace high sodium staples like instant noodles with fresh or low sodium options. Three, season creatively. Use spices, herbs, and acids to replace some of the salt. Four, stay hydrated. Adequate water helps your body regulate sodium levels. Five, monitor blood pressure. This is the most practical indicator of how your body responds to sodium. Recap, salt is neither hero nor villain. It's a vital nutrient that can become harmful in excess. By understanding where sodium hides, making smart food swaps, and tailoring your intake to your body's needs, you can keep salt working for you, not against you. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who's confused about salt. 
And if you want more science-backed tips for living healthier and feeling better, subscribe to Next Level Vitality and hit the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. Here's to your health, one mindful bite at a time.